Hey Jeff Howard here at kiteboarding.com and we've got some customers asking us after we did the twin tip setup talking about surfboard setups and little things that may make a difference in riding. So what I want to talk about is a different, uh, different aspects of this and different stance widths, different strap setups, different types of straps. So let's get into the straps. Now most commonly on a surfboard you're going to want symmetrical straps and people would say what do you mean by symmetrical? This is an asymmetrical strap. This is a twin tip strap. Now, if you have a three strap set up on a surfboard, you could use two of these in the front if you want. Such as this on the Air Rush Sector. These are symmetrical straps, but you could run two asymmetrical straps on the front and then run a symmetrical strap on the back. Now, most commonly on a surfboard setup, they're running two strap setups on the surfboards. The Sector is kind of a tuned down race board slash surfboard, but most commonly, like the Air Rush and this Crazy Fly, they have a two strap setup on them and allows you to move around the board, change your feet, and keep those straps really loose, use them when you need them. So a symmetrical strap is the most popular that is used on a surfboard so it can be used from both sides evenly and it wouldn't be changing this one sets its angle of attack on the asymmetric and you wouldn't want that so unless you're doing a three strap setup you definitely don't want these but I want to explain the difference on those so on the, the strap setups of a surfboard most commonly what you want to do is you want to start with the position where you want on the back foot if I'm riding a lot in the surf and a very good sized waves and one that be very powerful on the fins the further back your foot is the more power you're going to have over that fin that's what people you'll see and understand where your foot position is if you are on the top of that fin you're gonna have the most power input over that fin and that means it's gonna allow you to turn quicker and be more responsive if you're like me I ride a little bit of uh, small waves chop and I'm out there sailing on my board a lot more I position my, my foot a little bit further forward this gives the fin more override and can con it can give me an upwind ability a little bit. So finding that sweet spot where it is, if you'll notice where the inserts are on a board, they're positioned depending on the fin placement on the back. So don't think that every board is the same and where it is. It all depends on the designers wanting you to be able to drive these fins and control those fins. So once your back foot is set where you like it to be in an average, Stance width is your next thing. Stance width on a surfboard can vary. Now on the twin tip it's more in the 16 and up range or 15 and a half range and up. Surfboards will start out, some of them I've been measuring, they'll start out about 16 but averages can be up in the 17 to 18 and that means inside screw to inside screw. So those distances can vary. What that is is the further out you get the more stability you get in that board. And I will see people, when you're out there sailing and it gets flatter, they'll pull their back foot out, put it up here in front, and that gives you more upwind ability, lets those fins lock in and doesn't wash them out. Get your weight forward, get more, uh, more surface of the board on the water, and that gives you a little bit better upwind ability and a little bit lower wind riding ability. So, remember, start out at probably around 16 or 17 and you can go wider if you want. That's the most common setup on a surfboard. So position your pads. Some of them come stuck down, such as the air right here. It comes like this. It's ready to go. You don't move these pads. They put them in the position and you move the strap into three positions here. This one starts out at 16 and goes up to about 18 or 19 in stance width. Again, if you use a front one here, you use the front one here. This, the distance of these is about six to six and a half is common. So if you go to place yourself, let's say you got a surfboard and you don't have inserts in it, but you want to put them in there. That one is the NSI stick down surface mount. These work really, really well. They come with four stick downs and they come with their screws and they have two placement positions. So where you start placing these is very important. And what you want to do is clean that board really, really well, do a little bit of sanding, unstick, stick this down onto the board surface. So if you have a pad, you've got to remove that pad in this position so this can stick down completely to the board. So again, start where you think you might want your foot, where those fins are positioned, 
and the distance between them are six to six and a half. If you have a bigger foot, go to six and a half. If you're smaller, go to six. So start the placement, then you can start those, and then from here you'll measure forward and get your stance width. These are very, very helpful. I've seen guys actually take these and turn a two-strap board here into a three-strap, moving one of these up, and now they got a further foot position forward. They like it because it's a sailing type position. It's a much better position to getting that upwind ability and getting surface on the water. So these can be used on just about any board once you get that surface prepped and you get these stuck down. So surfboards are really, really nice if you wanted to rig them up. Here's another option. These are the Dekine Longboard Surf Pads. If you don't like the waxer board, this is a simple, great way there's, there's two pieces here. There's this one here on the top, and there's a big one underneath. You can position these anywhere you want, so you don't have to do this waxing. Waxing keeps your board from slipping if you put your foot up here for jiving or whatever it may be. You use these, stick them down. I like these. I can actually take a surfboard, place these down, trim around the pad really nice, and get these longboard pads placed right around these inserts and rig it. It is really nice and a lot of fun. So. When it comes down to surfboards, I always like to talk to people, if you're going to ride surfboard only, a lot of people start out with your two straps, then you want to progress into having just one strap, putting that one strap in the front to lead that board. Start learning to follow the board. It's a lot of fun. It's just the way it gradually leads you into strapless uh, kite surfing, which to me, I really enjoy. It gives more of a challenge in those lighter winds, uh, puts it in the, in the small waves, I can play around with it and kind of skateboard ride it. But a lot of people do like the straps. They keep them on. You're not going to lose your board. Now, that's Jeff Howard here at Kiteboarding.com to try to give you some more education on setting up that surfboard and having a lot of fun. It's a whole different perspective into kiteboarding, so give it a try. Get out on the water, and thank you for watching some of my videos. If you can, share these on your Facebook. Spread them around. We like to teach a lot of people out there as many as we can. Have a great day.